Our show will continue after these words from our first sponsor, Sunsweet Prune Juice. Well, we're off and running. Milton Cross has been known as the Dean of Announcers. His broadcasts from the Metropolitan Opera House in New York have been heard worldwide. And now the house lights are dimming. The hush falls over the expectorant audience as our maestro, the well-known American conductor, makes his way to the podium. GOP House Leader Gerald Ford of Michigan has called for a constitutional amendment to do away with the Electrical College. To do away with the Electrical, the Electoral College. Sportscaster Bill Stern is listed in the Hall of Fame of Broadcasting. Let's listen to one of his memorable moments when he blooped the following. <laughs> Imagine, the hatch of a great rocket ship swings open. A man steps out. Rocket ship. Good evening, Bill Stern. Tonight's story in a moment. If you suffer from dry skin, you'll find welcome relief in a Sardo bath. Just one capful of Sardo in your tub bays away dry skin. Makes every inch of your soot. Uh, I said makes every inch of your soot. Ah, uh, Um... I'm glad you were able to make our broadcast. We were just beginning to get a little wide as to whether you would arrive in time. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late because I went to see Michael Jackoff on the Queen Mary. Newsmen who originate their newscast from the battlefield are very often frustrated by the sounds of battle. The cavalry's new operation area is sparsely populated by Vietnamese civilians and heavily infiltrated by North Vietnamese. It's the type of situation that allows the cavalry to bring their full firepower to bear against the goddamn son of a bitch. And now, back to Walter O'Keefe and his next contestant on Double or Nothing. Yeah, I'd rather see you win here today than anybody else up here, I swear. I'd like to win. Uh, you're not married? No. Where's your, where's your family from? Where's your dad from? Well, my dad is from northern Michigan. He's what is a casket he maker. A casket maker? Right. <laughs> oh, Anna, tell me, have you had any unusual experiences in your work as a waitress? Oh, I've had several. <laughs> that, for instance, anything that uh, we could do with a daytime audience? You know what I mean? Oh, sure. <laughs> All right, what? One is, uh, yesterday I ran into, a, I hate to embarrass the man that's in the audience. Yeah. But uh, he asked me a question that, I didn't know how to answer, but yeah. he asked me, uh, is this his friend that went to the doctor and he's very sick? Yeah. He says, I didn't know what to do. And he says, I don't know what to tell him. Do you? Mm-hmm. So right away I says, yes, maybe I can. I don't know. Yeah. I says, what the trouble was? He says, well, he can't go out nights. He can't, he can't eat. Uh-huh. Can't do nothing. Poor guy. And he says, he had to send his wife away on a vacation. He says, so what do you think we should do with it? Yeah. Well, I me, mean, I didn't know what to answer there, so I said, well, I don't know. What's your suggestion? He said, well, I think you should get a good-looking girl like you and take her home and just have a big screwing party. I well, said, what? No. I said, why Anna, not go down to the, to the hardware we, Anna, and get a screw? Anna, and why don't we go on done. with the, uh, with the uh, questions we have here? A U.S. Army enlisted man in a communist ambush 50 miles north of Saigon. This American was riding back to camp with four Vietnamese soldiers. They'd been helping villagers clear lands for crap, crops. Silver loving ladies, why is new Tarnish Shield, Silver Tarnish Preventive and Cleaner, like a three-for-one shit sale? Oh, yes. Technical difficulties play havoc with network news shows, especially when they are aired live. Let's listen to newsman Frank Blair for this classic example. Lieutenant General Nguyen Van Tu, Chief of State and Military Candidate for President, finally showed up at a rally with the civilian candidates. That story from Charles Murphy in South Vietnam. We'll get that story from Charles, not quite ready yet. In the meantime, at the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri, the sixth annual meeting of the Midwestern Governors Conference opens today for a report here is Don Oliver at the conference. Well, we'll have that report a little later, too. This story, I'm sure I can handle myself. The so-called torch of peace is moving slowly across the continent from San Francisco this morning in the hands of a relay of runners. It is a peace campaign of a new kind. 
That story from John Dancy in San Francisco. You're kidding. Well, we'll have that story a little later on. I hope we find time for all these things. There's news from the Italian town of Caramanico Terme today that will surprise no one. Some people are uh, genuinely allergic to work. According to a report submitted to a conference on allergies, muscular activity on the part of those afflicted by work releases an extra amount of histamine, a stimulant that causes rashes and allergies. With a newscast like that, I'm getting more allergic every minute. Are we going to try for some of these stories now? We're ready. Over the weekend, as we told you, Lieutenant General Van Tu, who is one of the presidential candidates in South Vietnam, finally started some campaigning with the civilians. And here's that story now from Charles Murphy in South Vietnam. <laughs> so what page do you want, Larry? Do the weather. Do the weather. Okay. Probably won't get the weather map this time. <laughs> no. We do have difficulties once in a while like that because of the nature of this program, we switch around to several different parts of the country, and uh, sometimes it uh, works very well. Other times we have our difficulties, and we're having them this morning. More details on the automobile accident in which a woman driver lost control of her car on a curve, crashed through the guardrail, and rolled down a steep, a steep embankment. She was understandably shaken by this experience. As she reached the highway, she climaxed, uh, collapsed. Well, this all has come to be a little homemaker's helper here, Howie Viking, the uh, people's Peter pleaser, the Peter's people pleaser. Mrs. Pruitt from Texas, excuse me a moment, ma'am, while I make contact with Mrs. Louise Jacobs in Detroit, Michigan. Hello, Mrs. Louise Jacobs. Hello there. How are you, Louise? Fine, thank you. Well, I'm happy to hear that, Louise. How's everything in the Motor City? Oh, well, everything's all right. Good. Does your husband work in the automobile industry? He's working in a machine shop. He is? And what does he do in a machine shop? He's a tool maker. Uh, how long have you folks been married? 32 years. 32 years? Yes. That's a mighty, mighty long time. Do you have any uh, 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 children? Nine. Nine? <laughs> Ma'am, your husband's not a tool maker. He's a producer. <laughs> At a box social? Yes. What sort of a box social? Oh, church box. Oh, oh you mean where everybody brings box, box lunches? Yes. And then they bid. I, that's an old, real old-fashioned custom. The yes. girl brings the box and the man bids on it. Is that the idea? Yes. And what, what did he pay for your, uh, your little uh, package that you brought? <laughs> This message was brought to you by the Upper Midwest Council for Better Virgin, for Better Vision, the Better Vision. The following is a classic example of the ingenuity of the fast-thinking quiz master. No, sir, I'm sorry that's incorrect. Well, now, wait a minute. You've been asking us to spell words. How about you spelling one for us? Be glad if I can. What's the word? Spell gonorrhea. Gondolier. G-O-N-D-O-L-I-E-R. Gondolier. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> their penalty time in the dressing room and uh, get a jump on the other guys getting into the shower. The Watergate hearings filled the airwaves with months of testimony with the result that bloopers such as the following occurred. 
Now, do you, do you, do you, do you expect, I'll say, I'll say, do you expect us to believe that you and John Ehrlichman, two of President Nixon's closet advisors, told him nothing about this plan, sir? Well, the only thing I can think of is uh, a while back I had a rubber spider and I put it in the shower. You put a rubber spider in the shower? She hates spiders. What happened? She came running back out. This was before we were married. <laughs> Clock showing only 10 seconds to go, and now Orr catches the puck and rams it in between the girlies' legs and scores. Goalie. Service will be cut back by about 25% due to the shortage of diesel flu. <laughs> A copy in a commercial does not always run well with the title of a motion picture. This portion of our late movie, The Running Man, starring Lawrence Harvey and Lee Remick, is brought to you tonight by x -Lax. In this day and age of initial-oriented organizations, there has often been confusion between the NCAA football and an organization representing blacks. Good afternoon, football fans. This is another Saturday's football game between the University of Alabama and the University of Mississippi, which was brought to you under the auspices of the NAACP. Whew. That'll be the day. Uh, under the auspices of NCAA College Football in color. You've been listening to the latest news and comment from ABC Radio. Secretary Udall says you can find Naples in New Orleans, the hills of Rome in San Francisco, more Rembrandts in New York than Amsterdam, and more Italian art at the National Gallery in Washington than you'll find in any city in Italy. One thing that a performer must remember is to be sure his microphone is not open when he makes off-the-cuff remarks. This is Total Information News, Bob Johnson reporting. $35,000 was stolen from the First National Bank and Trust Company on East Colonial. Total Information News has learned from tellers at the scene that three men demanded money be put into the cosmetic case. I'm glad I don't keep my money there. And now, Virginia Graham answers her mail. Today's letter is from Mrs. C.S. And Mrs. C.S. has a problem with her husband. He hasn't been coming home at night and giving her the marital devotion that she feels is necessary. She has lived with him for several years, and she feels that this is an indication of perhaps a sterility or a desire to have love. Now, listen, my wall, she was been doing this. Oh, I'm too long. I have got to explain to you <laughs> that he was an impossible person. And he's been <laughs> on the air. And I, don't, and I have promised that I wouldn't do it anymore. Virginia, so, dear, yes. I'll take care of it. We're going to take a, uh, a cutaway now, and then we'll come back in just a moment. No, I will continue. <laughs> And I'll continue talking. Now, I'm very sorry. I think maybe we ought to go to music, and uh, I'll come back and I'll do my last one. Giant U.S. B-52 bombers early today struck in a major... Hold it a minute, please. We're getting right through it all. We've got a power shortage. What the hell is this? Oh, right. Beautiful Raquel Welch is shown on the set in Miami Beach where she is filming The Lady in Cement. Miss Welch has improved her stature as an actress and box office attraction. She has won the Interstate Theater Star of the 60s Award. And the International Star of the Year from Center and Pacific Theaters. Miss Welch is the proud owner of two really big ones. Hi, Equals in Brooklyn. Hello, this is WCBS News calling. Is there someone we can speak to for information on that two-alarm fire? Yes, ma'am. I can give you all the info you want. All right, sir. Suppose you give me your name first so we can uh, identify you. My number is 55. No, I, your name, sir, can I... I don't have no name. Let's get back to the music part of the program. Here's one by Miss Eartha Titt. I mean, God's sakes. <laughs> 
Now, I think that the climax of the play occurred when the stars decided to marry. Oh, I disagree. It occurred earlier, and the marriage was really anticlimactic. Don't think that I mean that marriage is an anticlimax. There are many climaxes in marriage. <laughs> well, that is, well, I am sure that you all know what I mean. <laughs> Everyone has experienced the giggles at one time or another. However, when performers become the victims of giggles on the air, it can result in hysteria. Right now, your animal health supplier is giving away free a special introductory size can of Pfizer Uttertone. Well, with, <laughs> with each 12 tube carton of teramycin for mastitis that you buy, you get this special introductory size can of Pfizer Uttertone. <laughs> uh, here we go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Teramycin, teramycin, now let's get serious, it, of course, is the mastitis treatment you, you, uh, now you want me to read that for you? <laughs> now listen, I'm going to make it, I've got all day down here, it's a healthy, I'm going to, teramycin gives faster, more thorough utter coverage than any other broad range treatment can because of its unique all liquid formula. And you, <laughs> I thought I had it there for a minute. You think I ought to do it? <laughs> no, no, I'm going to make it, I'm halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find Pfizer Uttertone just great <laughs> for soothing. <laughs> oh, when we come back to it. <laughs> no, I listen. If I give up, I'll never make it. <laughs> I'm going to face this thing right now because it'll be hanging over me all day. So, lady, so ladies, when you are thinking of an all-season thirst quencher, treat your family to a drink that's a delight, winter or summer. Instant white rose, hot or cold, orange Tico pee. Let's listen to this announcer's blooper during the presentation of the long-running dramatic series, The Edge of Night. We will return to The Urge of Night in a moment. <laughs> And here's one for the Guinness Book of Records. A local basketball fan trying to set a record spent 14 hours straight dribbling on the floor of his apartment. It could bring him fame and fortune, but it seems like a lot of time to spend playing with yourself. And that's the news. Let's tune in on this political broadcast where candidates were seeking supporters. And today in their never-ending... Uh, and today in their never-ending search for support, nine Democratic presidential candidates exposed themselves in Washington, D.C. before the Democratic governors. The organist here at Anaheim Stadium has a most unusual name. Shea Torrent. Is that right, Herb? Both. Yeah, I think that's it. Shea Torrent, yes. Line foul passed first. A high inside fastball. He's got one of the best organs, too, Scotty. Boy, it's a peach. It's Arthur Godfrey time. And now here's that man himself, Arthur Godfrey. Now, you folks who saw the first half of our show had the pleasure of watching a group of uh, talented young people from Holland, Michigan. They call them the Klumpen Dancers. Klumpen, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I'm told. Is the Dutch Wold... <laughs> the Dutch word for wooden shoes. Chester's Restaurant in the Market Street Arcade specializes in tasty food served quickly and attractively. So for a change of pace lunch, stop by Chester's Restaurant, where this week's special is a chilled grease sandwich and a choke. Son of a bitch! What do you say about Roosevelt that hasn't been said already? He's a, he was a legend practically in his own time. The New Deal, the Supreme Court, the jaunty way that he held his cigarette lighter in his mouth. A spoonerism is an unintended interchange of syllables. Let's listen to this classic example. Our next model is showing the latest thing in hot pants. This controversial fashion follows the mini and the maxi. You will notice that this hot pants outfit can also be worn as a two-place pea suit. 
Here is Lowell Thomas in another one of his classic breakups. Lowell Thomas and the news. Problems up there in space? Oh, yes. Head colds for all three. Also a cabin full of crumbs and <laughs> water puddles. Not to mention a lack of sleep, but everything considered, they report is still go for 11. <laughs> well, let's get back to Earth. Most of the bowlers bring along their wives for caddies. They like to carry their husband's balls from lane to lane. Well, today I'd like to tell you about a box, about a very special kind of box. Perhaps you own such a box yourself, and in it may be the same curious assortment of treasures. Now, if the, old, if the owner of the box I have in mind would tell you about it, she would say something like this. Years ago, when John and I were first married, we bought ourselves what is called in those days a strong box. The first things we put in it were our marriage certificate and a few securities. Not this time, guys. <laughs> you want to take it? time passed, many kinds of things found their way into the box. There was the orchid carefully pressed that uh, John gave me on our first anniversary. There was a lock of our baby's hair, packs of love letters, a service medal, a purple heart. And among these things, the most meaningful treasure of all was John's prudential life insurance. <laughs> Friends, <laughs> the prudential makes it easier for a man to be foresighted. You see, he doesn't have to depend on time and long, slow effort to create security for his family. <laughs> Can you think of a safer, surer, more convenient way to protect your family? How does it feel to be married to such a world-famous soccer player? Oh, soccer player. Well, when he's away, I have to take charge of everything. I have to be pretty much the man in the family. You mean you have to wear the trousers at that time? Yeah, but when he comes home, I take them off. Evil Knievel, one of the great daredevils of our time, knows no fear. Let's tune in on one of his telephone interviews, which was broadcast coast to coast, and hear his fearless comments. I do not take seriously anything the Reclamation Department might have to say. I'm not interested in obtaining any kind of a permit from them, and if they want to stop me from jumping the Snake River Canyon, they can shoot me out of the air with an anti-aircraft gun or put my ass in jail. That's just the way it is. And that's all there is. Okay, you tell that asshole I said to kiss my ass. Now, do you, do you really think, Tabor, that uh, some, some officials here are disputing the, the fact that they can dispute anything they want? They're chicken shit, two-bit politicians, and I don't like any of them. So, for those who think young, be sure you're stacked up with a Pepsi sex pack. A Pepsi six, uh, sexy peps pack. The first step is a new meeting of European common market foreign ministers. Italy wants such a session in Venice starting on or about May 10th. A European, a European political unity. Now, a monitor sports special. Uh, another report on the $100,000 All-Star Bowling Tournament. Here's Sam Levine at Convention Hall, Philadelphia. Well, I guess we're having a little problem down there with the storm or something. We can't get a hold of Sam Levine. Is he there now? Okay, Sam, go. Hall in Philadelphia for a monitor sports. That's it. We are still going to try and get Sam Levine. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here, fellas. Are we going to try and get... Okay, all right. When I say go, you, the next voice you hear will be that of Sam Levine. Okay, Sam, go. We're in Philadelphia for our monitor sports. Since we... Well, 
You can't win them all, friends. Here's another classic example of a spoonerism which delighted audiences. And the guests at the Saigon inauguration of President Tu shipped Sam Payne. We're on the air, Mac. Hi, everybody. This is Dean Martin. And Jerry Lewis. We'd like to tell you all about our latest and funniest picture for Paramount. Take my word for it. The caddy is the most hilarious picture we've ever made. Come on, join the fun. See Paramount's the caddy. Yeah, the caddy. How was that, you shit heel? <laughs> Without reading it, I'm with you. Okay. Next, you still rolling? All right, start. You can cut that bit out. I will. Okay. Now, this is Dean Martin. And Jerry Lewis with a reminder to see our newest and funniest motion picture ever, The Caddy. Oh, he's right, folks. Come on and join the fun of the most righteous 90 minutes of howls. Righteous? <laughs> That's riotous, you greaseball. <laughs> righteous. What is this, a religious picture? This is religious, Martin. And Jerry Lewis asking you to see our newest and funniest picture to date. No doubt about it, Dean. This is the funniest picture we've ever made. No kidding, folks. We're sensational. Take my word for it. Come on and join the fun. See Paramount's The Caddy. It'll make you shit. <laughs> Cut out, make. <laughs> you blew it. You blew it. You blew it. You blew it. You knew it. You knew it the moment you blew it. How could you do it? You blew it, you blew it, you blew it.